Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you the team order and enemy kill order I used for this epic trial in White Helm. Now, as you can see, I've got three times Nysha here. No real need for anything else. We're going to be just fine with these, I'll show why. Let's go to the trial. This is the last one. Now, the reason why we go full Nysha is because there's only one troop which gives any sort of uh, negative status effect, and this is Lady Sephira. Inflicts frozen when doing skull damage, but she's not going to get a chance to do that because she's going to be gone long before she has a chance to do any skull damage. Because we're killing these troops in reverse order. We're going Moloch first, then Lady Sephira, then most likely Templar, and then Archon Statue. The only way you would change the kill order and get rid of Archon Statue first is if you're in pretty bad shape with your team and you want to just stop the enemy dealing any sort of damage whatsoever, because this troop does do damage. Templar does not, it just boosts up the team. Uh, the reason why you want to do it in reverse order is Moloch drains all mana from an enemy, which is annoying, then deals a decent amount of true damage, boosted by mana drained, a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you had 15 mana stored, you're going to get like a 105 true damage in my instance here. So we don't want that. Get rid of them. Lady Sephira will be next on the menu. Again, a really high amount of true damage. Gains four life and attack when she does that, so she's second. And then, as I said, these two dependent upon the condition of your troops. Your main damage dealer to Moloch and Lady Sephira is actually going to be the standard Paladin. Deals damage to an enemy boosted by its armor at a one-to-one -one ratio, so really cool. You can um, put on Medals of Guard if you want to increase that as well. So your armor will be boosted and you'll get a bigger boost from that. There's another way to go if you don't have Nysha's. I just like Nysha's all around because it gives a boost to literally everybody. Hyperladin can be used to chip in damage on other troops. Plus damage to the two strongest enemies boosted by its armor. But as I said, our main damage dealer will be Paladin on the bottom two troops. We can use the Topaz Giant to chip in as well. Plus damage then converts five purple gems to yellow giant gems. Now, this is where a little bit of strategy comes in. Because Priestess of Light uses purple, and the Topaz Giant only converts five purple gems to yellow gems, you can take a look at the board, and if there's any gems where you've got yellow and purple mixed up, so when you do that conversion, they could change, but you've got purple elsewhere, dotted around, like say there's, you know, 10 purple there, there's a big chance that this won't work because it may convert five of those purple gems which aren't going to give a match. If you take those other purple gems first, charging up the Priestess of Light, you leave the ones behind which will give the Topaz Giant spell a much better chance of working. Then, not only do you cast that, doing damage charging up the team, but you also may leave a Giant Gem behind where she's charged up. You can target that column and take out that Giant Gem at the same time. You can also, also use her to target Deathmark Gems. These will appear sometimes. Target the column that they're in, cast her, take out that Deathmark Gem, and you may get lucky with a quick kill. That's going to be the general strategy, so let's dive in. Right, here we go. So we're definitely looking for yellow first and foremost, because we get a plus three boost on that. But if you don't like the start, if you think, oh, I've got none of my colours there, and just a crummy skull hit, don't feel bad about just going out again and coming in again. Costs you literally nothing, but you may get a much better start instead. It's a little bit cheaty, but who cares? There we go, we've got a four match instead. We're happier with that. Still no yellow. Yellow is our main colour. Plus three benefit to yellow on this team. I've right, got a yellow storm going, but still no yellow matches. I've got one then, that was nice. All right, this is what I was saying about casting this troop. There's 11 purple gems there, so the chances of this working right now are slim, even though we've got a really nice potential one there. It's only going to convert five of those purple gems away. So if we can match just one lot, take them away while leaving some yellow to purple behind, or some purple to yellow even, then uh, that is in our favour, but I quite fancy the chances of this, so I'm going to target matey boy at the bottom. Didn't work, but they didn't make the best out of that situation at all. So we will instead, we'll take this this way. This is going to give us a lot of mana. Now, because we converted those purple away on the first chance, there's less purple there on the 
second chance. Now there's only six there. We've got to really be really unlucky not to get a huge amount of mana from this. And we sort of were a little bit unlucky, but never mind. Got to go in now. Right, now let's um, cast this fella here. Strike while the iron's hot. While your armor is nice and high, make the most of it and you'll do a decent amount of damage. Again, there's not much purple there now. This is absolutely guaranteed to work. There's only four there. This cannot fail. Target the bottom troop. Let's get that thing out of the question. The other thing that's cool about this as well is once you've got rid of these two, they're the only two troops that use yellow, which is really cool because you can then cast this and it doesn't matter if it fails to a certain degree because the enemy is not going to benefit from it and they're only going to take any matches if they're an extra turn. So absolutely get rid of those bottom two, two troops first. Some may say that you get rid of this one first because um, these two doing true damage technically keeps your armor high on these two troops. But I've had really good success doing it this way. So I'm not going to change that now. So let's hit that bottom troop again. Gone. Now we're going to concentrate on Lady Sephira. I'm going to do that so that way. If you get any death mark gems come along, you can take them out with this Priestess of Light. Really, really cool. Let's hit her again. The reason why it's better is because uh, this, this one hits the two strongest enemies. It's not going to hit those bottom two troops that you actually want. What should we do now? Should we cast our conversion again? We got not many purple. There's only six, and we've got a really good chance of getting this one here. So we're absolutely going to do this one. Hit her again, soften her up. There we go, one extra turn. Got our power hitter charged up. Sphira's getting in the face. She's not happy. We just need one more charge up of that to get the job done. We do that because we don't want to get that wallop back ourselves. Only seven purple there now, so we can have a really good chance of getting these. these are, this is going to work. Oh, press the button twice and I accidentally um, let her survive, but she's not going to make it anyway. In fact, that was technically better because she's going to die anyway. So yeah, that was a little bit of fluke that actually went in our favour there. Now you can cast this fella. Bit of damage and just pick on these until they're dead. Uh, yeah, our top troop's about to get conked out. This is where it's player's choice, really. The top troop is going to do damage to the strongest enemy. If you're losing troops, get rid of this one first. If you're in good shape, you can get rid of this one first because it's just going to be a little bit longer at the end of the day because it doesn't do damage. It just gives increased armor. How many purple we got? Not many. Seven. Decent chance of this. Do it. No, don't then. <laughs> Whatever. Right, I'm going to use this troop now to get this yellow gem match, I think. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it that way. That is very good indeed. Only one. There's only a couple of purple there now and there. Uh, shall I do that? Slightly tempting. No real benefit though when this one's here. Let's cast this first. Decent amount of damage. Purple to yellow. Seven purple there now. I'm going to do that first. Give them another big hit. Have a little look around for the purple to yellow conversions again. So double match there, that's very nice indeed. Right, this should be okay now because there's more purple, there's nine, but there's a match there, there's a match there, there's a match there. Let's go for it. Yep, not too bad. And look, I say the enemy is not going to be taking yellow because they don't use it. So very much in our favor. They're going to be gone. See you later. Now, just a fellow at the top, and the game's a good one. Single targeting these dudes to death. You can do this now. The boost's only 39, so it's not absolutely mega, but hey, it's better than nothing. Purple to yellow would be good if that worked over there. 
But there's quite a lot of purple, so there's a chance it won't match. But like I say, it kind of doesn't matter. The enemy generally won't take yellow anymore unless it's an extra turn. So, playing sailing now, all the way home, and kaboosh, you are dead. And that is how you do these epic trials. We lost one at the end, but we don't care. But yeah, fairly straightforward. Um, just got to make sure that you get rid of those bottom two troops first. And get the job done. Let's uh, grab this pet. Thank you very much. You get that thing charged up to a mythic level. So there you go. That's how I've done this um, epic trials in White Helm. If you enjoyed the video, found it useful or helpful, be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button. It really does help. But most of all, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.